Welcome to a new tutorial in Learning Lua. In today's tutorial, we're going to continue our examination of creating and using meta methods. Now, as we defined last time, a meta method is a function that has been attached to a table to handle specific operations. In Lua, meta method signatures are associated with specific operations. By default, the generic definition of addition, subtraction, multiplication, etc is automatically attached to any object that we create. But utilizing meta methods, we can change a table's behavior in how it is going to handle each of these operations. This is specifically and most useful when we are working with tables. So for those who have had college math before and learned about matrices, you might have also covered the concept of adding two matrices together which is basically you're taking matrix C1 and adding it to the values inside of matrix 2. It's not looking at a sum, it's looking at creating a new matrix that contains the information within the two. So instead of going through all of these different operators and creating different method signatures for each one, I thought we might take a look at how to do table addition utilizing matrix addition. I thought that showing matrix addition and how it can be done with two tables via a meta method would be an excellent example on how we can modify and create meta methods and associate them with tables and why we would want to do so. So here this is the basic formula if you are creating a matrix addition. I pulled this image off of Wikipedia. The So this is the basic matrix addition formula. I that I pulled off of Wikipedia. This is what I learned in college. It is the standard methodology used for doing matrix addition. It's a pain to have to do this in class. If we've got a computer program or an app that does this for us, it is much more useful, but it's not a built-in function inside of most programming languages. So being able to create a function that handles this for us would be of a great use within certain applications. So basically, we're going to have two matrices or two tables and be able to add them together. The formula to do so is that we've got a value stored at row one, column one, row two, column one, down through however many rows there are, this would be the column. We also have a second table that has a second value stored at row one, column one, row two, column two, one, etc. When you are adding these together, the formula that you use is that you add the first the value that is stored at row one, column one, with the value that is stored in the second table at row one, column one. Thus, our formula looks like this. Again, doing this with a for loop is much easier than doing this by hand on, for a final in a calculator. So let's take a look at how this would work inside of an application. Okay, so let's get things started. I've created two tables, table one and table two. They are both set up as tables. I'm going to create a loop within a loop to store the values inside of. So inside of Lua scripting language, whenever we're wanting to do a multi-dimensional table, you have to define the second table as a part of it. So this is creating our initial set of rows. We're going to have five rows or you could define it as columns. It really doesn't make any difference. It's just as long as you have it clear in your head which one's rows and which one's columns. The i is set equal to, we're, we're going to create five rows. Then we're going to initialize a second set of tables each of that row. So it is a two-dimensional array or two-dimensional table for both of them, table one and table two. Then I'm going to randomly generate a number between one and 10 and store it at in each of the tables. If you wanna see what that might look like, when it outputs, there we have our output. Row one, column one has a value of eight. Row one, column two has a value of three. Row one, column three has a value of four, etc. And all the way through, randomly generating the numbers for both table one and for table two. I'm only showing the values for table one at this point. So we've created that. Now I want to reassign the addition function so that anytime I'm doing addition on table one, it automatically assumes and knows that I want to do matrix addition. So we've created the matrix addition function. This is going to replace the addition function associated with table one. 
The way that this application or this function works is that it does receive two tables and adds them using matrix addition. Tables are assumed to be the same size, which is a requirement to do matrix addition. I use the astonishingly creative variable name of new table to store this information in, and we're just basically going to create a loop. We're going to go from one to however many rows are stored in table one. We will create, make sure that new table is a multi-dimensional table associated with the value of i, so each row receives its own table of columns. And then we will go through and we're going to add table one's location to table two, and that will return new table back to the calling function. Just as we saw in our last tutorial, I'm associating the add signature with my function matrix underscore add. Then we're going to use the set meta table to set my table equal to meta table. As long as either table one or table two is associated with this meta table, it will do the matrix addition for it. We could also associate both tables with it, but as long as one of them is done, it will output the information correctly. Once we have associated the, the meta table with the add signature and we have assigned used the set meta table to assign my table one to that meta table or in other words replaced the plus signature with the, the matrix add function we can now give the command which is my new table which is creating a new variable new table and we are telling it to add my table one to my table two this will output our information. Now I went ahead and used a more complex print so that we can see exactly what's happening here. This is first of all going to print the row, the column, or the column and row, and then print out the first value, add it to the second value, and then the resulting value. So we get all 20 associated values and the calculation. The only thing that we're really actually concerned about in this calculation is the my new table and the information that has been stored in it from the addition. If we had not set this meta table, we would have gotten an error. Because we have redefined it, it is capable of doing matrix addition at this time. But without setting that meta table, Lua does not know how to add two tables together. There's no definition for how to handle this matrix addition or any kind of addition between the two tables. It is the meta method that tells Lua how to handle this specific type of addition for my application. There's a lot more that can be done with meta methods or meta tables. It allows us to be able to do some really neat things that approach true object oriented. Really all we're lacking is the ability to create classes. So we can, and we can even simulate that to a certain extent in, inside of Lua with our methods. If you want to dive into it, I've got extensive appendices in both beginning mobile app development with Corona and learning mobile application and game development with Corona, on which are both for sale on my website, burtonsmediagroup.com forward slash books. We have a lot more tutorials and lessons forthcoming. If you'd like to follow what's happening, you can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Brian Burton or Facebook at Burton's Media Group, or follow us on our website, burtonsmediagroup.com. If you'd like notification through YouTube, hit the like or subscribe button. 